I'm Gretchen Benedicts. I'm a researcher in the mineralogy department at the Natural History Museum, and I study meteorites. One of the great opportunities that you can get when you're a, a meteoriticist, which is a big long word that means somebody who study, studies meteorites, is that um, you can go to certain places on the earth where meteorites tend to survive longer because of environmental conditions. One of these places is Antarctica. It's very, very dry and very cold, so the meteorites are preserved for a very long time. So I've had the opportunity to go twice. Um, the first time was in 97, 98, and the second time was in 2003, 2004. You spend about six weeks total on the ice away from anyone else except the other members of your team. And so I was very fortunate to get to see a, a whole variety of different areas of, of the Antarctic, um, which was kind of exciting. And part of, it, part of the excitement came from the fact that I was reading The Worst Journey in the World at the time, which is this book written by Apsley Cherry Garrard, who was on Scott's Terra Nova expedition in 1912, the expedition that tried to get to the pole. And um, what was interesting is reading through it, a lot of the places we were staying on the reconnaissance team were very close to the traverse that Scott and his team would have taken to get to the pole and come back. So it was really interesting to look at that and to see how things were different and how things were the same. Because the tents are exactly the same. A lot of the food is very similar. I mean, we, we've got a bit more variety than they had but it's basically high fat content, <laughs> eat lots, try to stay warm. For me, the most difficult aspect is trying to pick the food you want to eat for the next six weeks. It's the part I dislike the most. <laughs> At the very beginning of the trip, you go to McMurdo and you have to get all geared up. And I'm perfectly fine with doing all of the, you know, put the tents together, put the sleeping bags together, put the cook boxes together, put all, every, all the gear together is fine. But when you have to go and pick out six weeks' worth of food, my brain just goes, I don't know what I want to eat today. How am I going to know what I want to eat in six weeks? The cold can get to you, and it, it certainly depends on, on how prepared you are for it. But you know you're there for six weeks. The isolation doesn't get to you, or it didn't get to me, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, because the first time I went, I was even more isolated than the second time. The second time we had satellite phones, so we could contact them the rest of the world. I fell in a crevasse the last time, but not a big one. <laughs> um, you can tell when you're walking around where the crevasses are um, because they're a lot lighter than the ice. So the ice looks blue and the, if it's just a snow-covered crack, it'll be whiter. And this one was only about the width of my leg anyway, so I went in up to my knee. But it was quite surprising initially. <laughs> I guess overall you feel like you know you're going to get back. Um, for me, it's a great experience. I really enjoy being out there. I enjoy being in the, the constant sunlight. Um, I think other people have a harder time with that. 